everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and it's time to leave no dye behind. Here in this plastic shoebox, I have multiple various dye containers, um, I, especially these three bigger ones are the plan for today. These are containers that I used to rinse out extra dye as I was making dye stocks. Maybe if I measured something, there was some extra dye in the cup I wasn't going to use for the project. I rinsed all this in here, specifically from the summer 2024 summer mini skein mini series, but also from some other videos I was working on. Now there are also some squeeze bottles with lids. Those I may not use here today, but I have some squeeze bottles with no lids and those I'm definitely going to use up as well. I don't have a plan of what we're going to do with the color on our yarn. But I'm going to let inspiration take as we see what these colors are and what they do. All I know is that I'm not planning on combining them all together 100%. I want to layer them on the yarn somehow. But how exactly we do that, well, we will see. And then we'll also see if I pull in these other colors. These aren't mystery colors. I think I even labeled, yeah, this is these other, the squeeze bottles with lids aren't mystery. Um, this is bright aqua at a approximate 0.3%. Um, I think that I measured the volume of the bottles and measured out dye. And so an approximate <laughs> concentration, which means that I could figure out approximately how much dye is in here. And so I may save them for something else because I've not shipped SMSMS yet. And so I might dye more for that. So therefore I might save those colors. One thing I like to do with dye stocks, whether they're leftovers or anything, is store them inside a secondary container. So yes, the dye here is in a mason jar. It's well protected. But what if there was a drip of dye on the outside that traveled down and hit the bottom of the jar? That could cause a stain somewhere, right? And so that's why I store them inside a secondary container because if there's drips or leaks, then we have something to catch it. I do this for all of my dye stocks, not just leftovers. Uh, I have an under the sink space where I keep my dye stocks and they're all stored in a secondary container. And the reason why this is a secondary container is I guess you would consider these the primary containers. <laughs> but anyway, Let's go chat about our yarn. As we leave no dye behind today, we're gonna leave no yarn behind and use up some of the discontinued dyer supplier yarn that I have left. This yarn is the Two Ply Superwash Sock Yarn and it is 100% superwash merino wool. The yarn is an incredibly soft two ply yarn and I'm sad that you can't get it anymore. Before I pre-soak the yarn, I'm gonna add on some removable nylon zip ties. I like the removable ones because you can use them again and again. <laughs> they did start white occasionally, and I would say not all the time, but some of the times I find some color transfer from my zip ties onto the yarn. I'm not worried about that today, but typically I pick ones that are more stained on a colorway that is gonna be darker. Today's colorway, I have no idea how deep it might be, but we're gonna go ahead and pre-soak our yarn in just some plain tap water for at least 30 minutes. I sort of want to see how absorbent the yarn is because that sometimes helps determine how long you want to pre-soak it. Some yarn bases like Stroll uh, absorb water so fast that you can pretty much just do a little bit of dunk and have everything wet. But a longer pre-soak means that you're more likely to have your fibers less saturated, which means you can get more even color coverage if that is what you care about. <laughs> Today I'm going to dye the yarn in my four inch deep full size catering skin pan. And I removed some of the water from our pre-soak, not all of it. I think I want to add some dye on here and see what happens before figuring out what I want to do with acid and the water volume. <laughs> Just so we can get a bit of a feel of how pigmented it is. Now, if you want to learn more about the tools and equipment that I'm using in my video, I do have links and affiliate links down in the video description. Obviously the yarn base itself is discontinued, but I will have a link to some other bare yarn sources down there. Let's see. Let's see what's in box number one. Now I can say that this color is looking a little bit purplish to me. 
Now, among the dyes that are in these containers, and I don't know which container has which color. Uh-oh. Uh, we've got some primary colors. We've probably got, uh, oh gosh, I don't even know if they're Dharma or Jacquard. And ha! See, just from placing this down, we've got a little dot of yellow and a little dot of pink on the yarn. Probably not from this jar, but from one of the other containers. Let's see. Ooh. Ooh, that's a pretty color. All right, the colors may break, but let's pour on these big containers of dye and we'll see what happens. There's no acid, I think, in anything yet. Um, this looks like it's sort of like a tealish color. Ooh, that's pretty. Oh, oh, that's so pretty. All right, we don't have any heat in here yet. Um, this is just some 5% acetic acid white vinegar. I'm gonna pour on a little bit onto these sections. Going with my just going for it and not measuring thing, and I'm just gonna work these colors through a little bit. Now my tap water is slightly acidic, which means that often I can see colors start to strike without adding acid, but, and actually, I mean we did just add acid, but we don't have very much color left. It's pretty much all soaked into the yarn. Okay, I'm gonna actually, since we've moved things, let's flip the yarn over. This is really pretty already. Okay, we have another mystery color. Uh, maybe this one is a little more pink. We'll see. Rather than pouring this directly onto the yarn, I'm gonna pour some into this cup that has a little bit of vinegar. Cause that also gives me time to get a sense of the color. Ooh, it's grayer. Sort of a more grayish purple. That's pretty. Because this is giving me time to see what it is before adding it onto our yarn. Now, I think that for some of the other leftovers, I'm gonna do something similar. Oh, and we are overexposed. That's a little more accurate. <laughs> okay, I have these two greens here. You'll see I'm using the yarn as a countertop. Both of them were done with jacquard. Oh, this, well, they're not that pigmented, so we'll see. Both of these were done with jacquard bright yellow, I think, and one has some turquoise and one has some blue in it. Okay, I'm rinsing out these bottles. Oh dear. Mostly. Let's add some of this random color to it. All right, and we're gonna add just a little bit onto the end. Because I'm concerned about it being a little bit too deep. But I think it's fine. That's fairly pigmented, so I'm gonna save it. Um, as we're getting more water. Do I want to do that all over? Maybe not, but here is what we can do. I'm gonna add some of our pre-soak water down here so we can increase the volume of water that we have. Then I'm gonna pour in some of this green dye, dissolve it down here before moving it back on to our yarn. See how that allowed me to spread it out a lot more? Now, I haven't used it all up yet, which is fine, but I wanted to sort of maintain some of the feelings that we have in here, even though we did overtake some of that pretty teal, I think. Uh, let's see, let's add some more of this color sort of in the middle. We could start heating things up soon, but this is really, really pretty. We don't have as much color down there. I'm okay with some whites behind, but I'm really trying to listen to these pigments and let that sort of determine what's gonna happen. Now, I'm gonna add a little bit of this color down on this end mainly because I want to sort of break up some of the brightness in those greens a little bit. Um, here are these containers, mostly empty. We can add that on. I do have more of the green. 
But I suppose what I should do now is start heating things up. Uh, because, well, that does seem to be setting pretty quickly. Oh my gosh. This yarn is just sucking up the dye. I mean, there's a little bit in there. Huh. But see how for this project, I saw the colors, saw how much there was, what they were doing, and then let that inform the technique and how I played with layering these colors on the yarn. I'd say we use, because the cup's a little bigger at the top, most of the green, but let's go ahead and use the rest. I'm gonna fill this with water to dilute things a little more, and then I'm gonna do what I did before. I'm scooching our yarn down, adding the green so I can dissolve it before bringing it back and letting those colors flow down onto the yarn a little bit. Some of it may go to the end, some of it may not. And here I am coming with more vinegar, just adding that on. The more you dye yarn, the more you'll get a good sense of how much acid you need to get your colors to strike. Uh, the amount that you need with your water may be different from mine, but I suppose this is sort of something like a chef can do. A chef who has done a recipe a million times may be able to put things in and knows how much spices to add without measuring uh, because you get that feel of like, okay, I need this much garlic powder or what have you. And that's sort of some of the feel and uh, like skill, I guess, that I have. Okay. Be careful when you're putting <laughs> your fingers in a warming dye bath. Things aren't hot yet, but yeah, I think that this is so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna reduce the heat to medium as we bring this up, and once things get hot, I'll pop back in. Ooh, I, it's hard to say if we have breaking or some of our greens have traveled, but things are looking super pretty now that we're hot. We don't need to be at a boil. I'm gonna reduce the heat to medium low. You want things to be steamy, but I'm just peeking. Most of the color has absorbed already, and it's just been a couple of minutes, but I'm gonna heat things now for 30 minutes so we can finish setting this color. I know I set a timer, but there's no longer a timer going off. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I'm writing some things right now, and so maybe I got distracted. <laughs> All right. Oh, but it's been at least 30 minutes, maybe longer. Let's remove our yarn from the dye bath. There's no harm in heating your yarn longer. The only concern that I have is if the water level goes down too much, and so if things dry out, then you could scorch it. But heating for an hour versus 30 minutes. That's not a big deal because I had enough water. Oh, I need to turn off my stove. Always turn off your stove. <laughs> I'm on a roll today, but I'm gonna set aside my yarn so it can cool completely and then we can wash it. Let's quickly wash our yarn. It's been a couple of hours. And we're gonna add some dish soap. I'm not anticipating any color bleeding because our yarn soaked up all the color so fast. Ugh. But isn't it fun what you can create with leftover dyes? And there's like a bunch of different dyes that went into here. I'm not seeing any bleeding. We have some shadows in here though. Ugh. I love it. You know, part of this reminds me a little bit of food coloring. I mean, if this was food coloring, we'd see some more pink breaking out, but some of the colorations just makes me think that. Anyway, we're not getting any bleeding, so I'm gonna finish rinsing out the soap. Then I'll put this to my skin dryer and hang it up to dry. Looking at the finished yarn, I was about to make a comment about the green, and then I remembered the green was specifically mixed. I was thinking like, oh, there's a lot of green for not having emerald and maybe only some hints of Kelly green in here. And truthfully, we don't have either of those colors, but I did mix my own greens that I had a lot of leftovers from. And so that pumped up the volume of the green in this yarn, which I'm not mad at. Otherwise we have some blue periwinkle and almost grayish tones in here that were the leftovers from primaries and a bunch of other projects. 
But without the green, it looked like there was so much dye in those jars, but there really wasn't. And so it's really hard to tell how much dye you have in water without having a label on it. And this is why when you're making a stock solution, which these are not stock solutions, <laughs> these were leftovers, but when you're making a stock solution, it's important to label your storage containers with the concentration you mixed it at. I usually mix my stock solutions at a 1% concentration where I have one gram of dye per 100 milliliters of liquid and labeling them will help you in the future. <laughs> I think I have some other samples where I'm like, oh, this is about a 0.33% stock solution because I believe I, met, I dissolved half of a gram into 150 milliliters, maybe? I forget. Yeah, something like that. And so as long as you have an approximate idea of how much dye is in your liquid, then you can get a better idea of how much you need to use to get a given color on yarn. But when you're dealing with an unknown amount of dye, I mean, I had a feeling it wasn't going to be that concentrated because these were leftovers. This was the tiny amount of dye left in a cup on a spoon. So not that much pigment, but you never really know until you play with it. So you don't have to save these leftovers, but you can and get some beautiful bonus colorways out of it. Twist it up. You can get a feel for some of those watercolory light effects we have on the yarn. This comes from pouring your dye that is not that concentrated onto yarn, and well, the results are stunning. My one regret is that this is a discontinued yarn base because it is so soft. I wanna dye more of it, but I can't. I'm sure I can find something similar, but it's always a shame when you know you're playing with a yarn you can't get more of, especially if you enjoy the results. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss a new video. I typically post at least twice a week, but we also have special series and live streams that crop up randomly in the schedule, and so if your notifications are on, you won't miss any of it. If you love the yarn I dye and want to bring some home, you can! I have an Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations, that is filled with yarn that has been featured in my videos. And in fact, if you check the listing descriptions, you can often find the video title and approximate date of publication in there so that way you can go watch the video and learn more about the yarn before or after you've bought it. I also label all of my skeins with the date, approximate date. Sometimes things get shifted around, <laughs> shifted around. Uh, and the title of the video so that way you can find it and add just another handmade element to your yarn. You can find the links to my Etsy store down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.